Hi, this is Mike. Welcome to this Fusion Simulation Validation example. Uh, in this one, we're going to do a rectangular plate with all edges simply supported and a uniform pressure. It does come from Rourke and Young, Formulas for Stress and Strain, 5th edition, 1975. Page 387, table 26, case 1C. So uh, what we have here is a rectangular plate where we are going to assign 100 PSI and pressure the plate itself is 20 inches long by 10 inches wide. The loaded area is 8 by 4 inches, so you can probably see it on the model behind me. I've already created a rectangle on the top surface, and I've split the top surface into two regions. So that way, when we get into simulation, we can put the pressure in this 8 by 4 inch section. And I've already shown how to do the splits. Pretty simple thing to do. It's very convenient for simulation. The thickness of the plate is a half inch thick, and the material properties we're going to use is a modulus of 30E6 and Poisson's ratio of 0.3. And ultimately, what we want to see is a max stress of 11,264 by hand calculation. So we're going to see if we can get those same results uh, out of fusion simulation. So let's move this Excel sheet out of the way. And again, I've already split this. Uh, a little more detail, I have also split the model uh, around its perimeter on the edges. So you can see there's a line right there, an edge, or if I do that, you can see there's two surfaces uh, along the long edge and the same thing on the short edges. So the reason behind that is uh, ideally this would be a plate or shell element model due to its thickness to, to overall length and width, but since we're going to do this as a solid element, um, what we want to do is constrain the model, our, our simple supports, right around the center of this model so that it behaves most like a shell element. And we can do that if we select it right at the middle of its thickness, and then also, you know, um, the way that we apply the constraints, i.e. applying them to a specific uh, line as opposed to constraining the whole entire face. So if we constrain the whole entire face, it makes a more rigid constraint with the bricks than than what the shells uh, would normally do. Shell elements have, have more degrees of freedom, so uh, we're just kind of getting around that by by selecting this one single line along the edges. So let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, what we're going to do is go to the simulation environment and as we go into simulation, we are going to select the static stress analysis type. I know uh, this is our fourth example. Um, in the future, you know, as we go through these validations, we're going to move into some of the other element types, or excuse me, the other uh, analysis types. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to get there. Uh, we will get there. Let me go ahead and create this study. So the first thing is the materials. And... Uh, so if I go to the drop down menu here and select my study material, or you know I can select it over here uh, in the browser, uh, you can go to the menu here and select a material that is something close uh, to what I'm using here, or in my case, I've already created this and saved it into a library. So I'm just gonna use my own library. And if I look at the properties on that, you can see that uh, what I did was take a steel material, so it has a density of 0.28. And then I, I made sure that the modulus was 3E7 or 30E6, and Poisson's is 0.3. So that's what we're going to use for the material. Constraints. So for this model, and because I had the model selected, by the way, the parts selected, you notice when I come into constraints, it automatically still has that selected. So I'm going to hit the X button there. Uh, for meeting the definition of the, the simply supported, let me select the, the edge that I created there and uh, rotate the model around. And we'll select this one there. All right. So for this, uh, they asked that it is simply supported. So let me get rid of, of all the constraints, first of all, and take a look at the mini axis here. Y is up, X is normal to those edges that I just selected, 
and then z would be parallel with it. So I definitely need to constrain the y direction uh, because we're going to assign some pressure, right? And if I don't constrain the y direction, uh, we have pressure normal to this face, the part's just going to fly off in the space. So we definitely want to do that. And then the other constraint that we're going to apply is the translation that is normal to that face. So for these two edges, that would be the UX or translation in X, and we'll say OK to that. And let's go back to our constraints, and I'm going to select that edge right there, rotate the model around, this edge right there, and again, um, we want to include Y uh, because that's the vertical direction. We're going to include Z because that's normal to the face, and I'm going to remove the uh, X constraint from these two. All right, so there is that, and next thing we need is, is loads. So on their structural loads, there's all the different loads we have available. We're going to do a pressure, select that surface, and again, it's 100 PSI. In this case, positive pressure is normal to the face of the element, or pointing into the face of the element, I should say. Um, all pressure is normal. And we'll say OK to that. And then from there, what else do we need to define on the setup? We don't have to worry about contacts. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the mesh right now. I'm just going to let the program do what it does. And we'll go to the solve pull down menu and go ahead and choose solve. At this point, we can say whether we want to cloud solve or locally. This is a nice simple model. Let's say we do it locally. We'll just let the PC solve it, uh, the laptop. And it's a fairly quick model. You can see it's already into the solving phase. And of course, when we get into the results, it's going to show me the safety factor. We're not too worried about that. Uh, what we want to do is take a look at the max stress. So I'm going to change to a stress output. There's my von Mises stress. And technically, we can take a look at, say, uh, the normal direction. So in X, uh, we can see what our stresses are there, 6,487. Uh, in the Y direction, it's going to be pretty small. And then normal Z. There's where our max occurs. Now, this max is pretty low. If we take a look at uh, our, our sheet here, our Excel sheet, we are expecting a result of 11,264, and we're a little bit off of that. So uh, what's the cause of that? If we look at this model, what we never did was select the mesh. We just let the program do a default mesh, and we don't know what it looks like as a result. So if I display the mesh, you can see how large the mesh is relative to this geometry. So because we are applying a, a pressure normal to the surface and bending it, we don't have a really good mesh here to capture um, the, the uh, stresses accurately. So we are going to do a refinement on the mesh. So let me go ahead and say finish results. And I can come back to the mesh here in the browser or across the, the top in the panel. And I'm going to edit that. And I could adjust the slider. We can move the slider down towards the finer end of the spectrum, that is towards the left. Or I could also say that I want to use an absolute mesh size. And we know that the plate is a half inch thick. So what if we use a mesh size of 0 0.25? Uh, we'll say OK to that. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and generate that mesh. Now what we'll see here is we get a, a much more uniform mesh because I'm, I'm basically specifying two elements through the thickness and then of course it's uniform uh, in the other direction. So that technically uh, would be sufficient or should be sufficient. Let me go to the manage pull down menu and settings. We're gonna add another thing in and I don't think that we have used it or I've used it yet in one of these examples. So. From the Manage and Settings, I can select Adaptive Mesh Refinement. And what the Adaptive Mesh Refinement will do is it'll remesh the model after it does a solve, and then calculate and compare what the stresses are from one run to the subsequent run, and then stop once we've reached a certain limit. So let me go ahead and set this to high, for instance. So what we're telling the program at the high setting is it can do up to six mesh refinements. Uh, and that would be six solves as well, right? Six mesh refinements plus six analyses um, up to that number. Um, 
And what would make it stop is if it reaches those six refinements and hasn't converged, or uh, if we reach a result convergence tolerance of 5%. So right now it says it's converging on the von Mises stress. Uh, so what it's gonna do is compare the von Mises stress from one mesh to the next refined mesh, to the next refined mesh. And when that value changes, the max von Mises changes by less than 5%, it's going to go ahead and stop at that point. So we'll leave it there. You do have other things that you can converge upon. You can set it to, to be your first or third principal stress as well as displacements. Um, and then the next thing down is the portion of elements to refine. So it's going to refine about 40% of the, the mesh in the model concentrated around where uh, the max stress is occurring. I would note that there's one further notch over here to the right, and that's custom. And if you change it to custom, that basically means that you can then change any of these inputs. So you can you can put that exactly where you want it to be. I'm going to leave it at high. We'll say OK. And at that point, we can solve again. This time, I'm going to send it to the cloud. And we'll go ahead and hit solve just for something a little bit different. So there you can see that it is sending it off to the cloud. And we'll get some more status updates uh, here as soon as it starts to go through uh, the motions of the uh, solution process. And now it's scheduled. Solving. All right, and now we have our results back so we can go ahead and close the job status window. And here we can see let me go ahead and close this window right here. Uh, here we, we can see what we got out of the model. So you can see that did refine the, the model a good bit here uh, towards the center region where the, the maximum stress is occurring. And I have two different values here, right? I have a, a negative 11,537 and a positive 11,524. So the negative is going to indicate uh, where we have compression and then on the flip side of the model where the 11,524 is, those are my tension values. So we can go ahead and plug that into our spreadsheet and see how much we differ in this case. Let me go ahead and, and drag this window over here if I can. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to put in a value of 11,537 is our max and there we can see that our percent difference is 2.4 percent so i've talked about that before uh, not very um what do i want to say not too far off from the hand calculation there and again it's one of the great things about using book values is that you know what that value is or even if you do a you know a hand calculation so that as you are are getting up to speed with fea uh, you can know you know, learn what you have set up properly and what you have not set up properly or, or you know, go through that process of why aren't my results matching the hand calculation. And I think that 2.4% is, is pretty decent. And the last thing that I'm going to show with this model, because we did the mesh refinement process with it, if we go to results tools, the mesh convergence, we can go to convergence plot. And under the convergence plot, there you can see what the output is. So we told it to converge on the von Mises again. And so from the first output, there's our results. And then uh, in the second mesh that it did, there's where it resulted in the second one. So the first one, what, right about 10,000, looks like 10,017. And after it refined the mesh, it went up to about 10,025 for the von Mises. So again, our target was you can stop after the change in the von Mises stress is 5% or less. And we actually achieved a lot better than that. So that's kind of nice whenever you utilize the mesh convergence utility. Uh, then you're able to get a plot of, of what those stresses are with each refinement. So uh, just another thing to keep in mind in and in a nice, useful tool. So hopefully that was a interesting and useful validation for you. I uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.